Hello, hobby friends. A buddy of mine asked me if I would convert a Chaos Kill Team into Night Lords. But before I do that, if you're subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. It really means the world to me. Now let's make some Night Lords. For the conversion, I have some bits here. I sculpted pairs of bat wings in three different sizes. I also gathered some heads to be mounted as decorations. To increase the diversity of size, I'm also including this Aquila from a Vanguard Veteran Shield. Here I've got some bits from the bits bin at my local game store. Always support your local game store, whenever possible. I'm planning on using this Pewter Chaos Power Pack to convert a Loyalist Marine, but I'm tempted to switch down to my friend's mini and see if he notices. It'd be funny if he picked it up and is like, why is this one so heavy? Okay, let's get started. I will be using paperclip to act as the stakes to mount the heads on. There is a problem with that, though. My smallest drill bit, 1mm, takes at least 10 times as long to drill as the next size up. Not sure why. So I thought of a solution just for this project. I'm going to drill with a 1.5mm drill for the first 95%, then switch to the 1mm drill to finish it up. There will be a large hole at the bottom, but I don't think anyone will ever see that part. First, I need to flatten the bottoms of the heads. I'm pressing the back of the blade with my thumb to get a firm, controlled, and safe cut. Since this is an unhelmeted human head, I make an indentation to indicate where the neck used to be. Then I carve a pit for the drill bit to sit in. I want this head mounted at an angle, so I'm starting off off-center. Some people are slow and gentle when they drill by hand. Not me, I'm pedal to the metal. As soon as I see the white pimple of stressed plastic, I retract the 1.5 and drill it home with the 1 mil. Now that is one impaled looking head. Ah, the most enjoyable part of this project, straightening the paperclip. Nothing beats the quite literal back and forth of this totally not tedious process. Okay, I think two ought to be enough. While they're still in one piece, I loosely and quickly hit them up with a low grit nail file to give them more tooth for a stronger bond. Using some bent needle nose pliers, I cut off a piece. Then I use a steel file to file the end flat. Chaos models hurt enough with plastic spikes, we don't need metal ones. I try out different heads to see how they look. A bead of superglue fixes the stake in place. I clean up the excess glue with a wad of rolled up tissue. Then I slide on the head I settled on. Skulls and helmets are one thing, but this impaled human head in particular looks a bit disturbing. Perfect for chaos. For the other side, I place a skull with a downward orientation to balance out the upward gaze of the human head. On this one, I put down a skull, then I top it with a helmet. This guardsman has been here for quite a while. I test fit a fresh guard head up top. Then I try it on the next pike over. I can't explain why, but the orientation looks more pleasing to me. I'm also pleased with how dynamic this battle sister's hair looks at this angle, as if it's being pulled down by gravity. There. A nice collection of Imperial Noggins. This Night Lord collects Space Marine heads, though he has never seen their faces. Using his chain axe, he saws through the neck armor and immediately mounts them up top. I'm giving this guy a granite helmet. He has a plasma pistol and a special sword, so I'm thinking that he's the leader of this kill team. In which case, he deserves a special trophy. With all the trophies mounted, it's time for chain. This jewelry chain I bought is super tough. So tough, that even using all my strength, I can't break a single link. Like, no joke, I'm actually shaking the camera and pulling so hard. Compare that to this chain. The links have slightly different shapes, which is how I tell them apart. And this chain breaks super easily. I still have to put a bit of force on it, but it's nothing compared to the other chain. I don't think these links were soldered, which allows me to open and close them when needed. Let's try and cut the other chain. These pliers can easily cut through paper clips, so it should have no problem with... Oh wait. Wow, you can even see where the pliers tried to cut through. Okay, time for round two. Look at that. Like most problems, the solution was to use more force. Look away, Zelda fans. Link has been cut in half. I want to connect these two trophy poles with chain for no other reason than it looks cool. After measuring the distance, I utilize my grip strength to cleave another link. I put the chain on. I put the chain on. I put the chain on. Why was that so hard? Then, while propping the chain up with my fingernail, 
I apply superglue and grasp it with my other hand to get the desired position. I want to have a head hanging from the chain, but I change my mind and want to hang it upside down instead. So now I get to gap fill a hole that I just made with superglue and baking soda. Sometimes you make a tiny mistake and have to do a bunch of work to fix it. I drill a hole to fit the chain. Using the weaker chain, I measure out a length I need, and pull it off by literally pulling it off. The chain link at the end is slightly too wide, so I squeeze it so I can squeeze it in. Okay, now I just need to attach it. Almost there. Almost there. Hmm, maybe if I widen the gap with the blade of my hobby knife. There we go, got it through. Now I just need to close the link. Oh, oh no. Oh no, how do I close the link? Okay, this time I'm using the pliers as tweezers, that way I can close upon threading. Almost there. Perfect. Oh wait, I attached it backwards. Crap. Anyway, while trying to pull the chain off, I ended up pulling it out of the head instead. Which is perfect because I can just glue the head on forwards. Next, I glue a screaming space marine head onto some thin steel wire. I scuff up the wire a bit to increase adhesion. Then I glue it in this wire-shaped groove that I carved into this guy's hand. Hopefully, this will result in a flush fit that will hide the end of the wire. What I'm trying to do here is make it look like this guy is dropping a head that he just severed barehanded. I use hot glue, my new favorite gore tool, to add some thickness to the gore strand. This is my first time making an effect like this, and I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. Now my friend forgot to put pauldrons on this dude, so I'm just going to replace them. I don't have any chaos pauldrons, but I figure this 30k looking loyalist pauldron will do the trick. I just need to remove that pesky symbol. It looks rough right now, but with a little sanding, it looks good enough. Since this is a crappy clay copy, I need to flatten the back. Then I make a hollow section by drilling holes and meticulously carve out the remaining volume. After preparing pauldron number two, I glue the clay skull on the center line. This is where the bat wings that I sculpted come into play. Just like the pauldrons, this copy came out of one part mold, so I need to fillet the back flat. I also need to flatten the sticky out bits on the front. I could have done this on the original, but now I get the fun of doing it on every single copy. Awesome! I place each wing next to the skull and bend them into place to forge the evil Aquila. With an all done pauldron, I satisfyingly glue it in place. Now that's one night lordy looking lord. Then it was a simple matter of doing the same thing for the remaining nine legionaries. And in case anyone's wondering, I'm using Sculpey Primo for the clay, and I'm baking it for around half the recommended time. This way, it's all bendy and easy to work with. I was concerned that I made the wings a little too big, but after putting them on, I'm rather happy with how they spill over the edges. I also glued smaller wings onto a few of the heads. These are the leftovers from the Aquilas that some of the skulls were sourced from. Honestly, I might have to do this to some of my loyalist marines. It looks pretty freaking cool. And with that, I think these guys are done. These are some of the most heavily converted miniatures I've ever worked on, and I'll be painting them up pretty soon. Until next time, have a good one.